What's up, y'all? It is Fido from Self Taught Hustle back at it again. And as promised, we will start looking at the architecture of how an NFT works as it relates to the Ethereum blockchain. There is a lot of information on the internet as to how to go and deploy an NFT, or I should say a lot of the examples that I've seen are how to deploy NFTs in plural. However, I haven't really seen somebody put the architecture of how these different systems are interacting with each other. To some extent, what you're doing when you're utilizing an NFT is that you're using two decentralized, I'm going to use that word loosely, decentralized mechanisms, one in being the blockchain and then the other, the Ethereum's blockchain, and then the other one being IPFS, right? So what it's, what is not evident right off the bat is how those two one, it, well, really, I, to some extent, they're both protocols. Yeah, I mean, they're to how those two protocols work together. And it's actually a very loose coupling from what I've been able to understand so far. And uh, that's what we'll get into today. So if you're interested in understanding how NFTs really work under the hood, I think this is going to be a good high level overview to wrap your head around. So effectively, the ERC twenty ERC seven twenty one is the standard for a NFT contract onto the blockchain. We've already done that on the, this channel, right? However, there are additional components to the NFT that we haven't covered yet that I was interested in taking a look like. Excuse me, taking a look at one of those components was the metadata, and then the other component was the image of the actual NFT. So it was one thing to deploy the ERC seven twenty one contract, right? the NFT contract, but it's another thing to associate metadata and then an image with that given NFT. So I started doing some digging as to how that actually, how, how all of that works together, right? And as you guys seen in prior videos, IPFS is a protocol that essentially gives you data or content uh, from, in, from is the, the protocol in and of itself is decentralized in its design. And again, using it loosely, I don't know if some guy has the off switch on that, but to be quite honest, it, it does not seem uh, like it for right now. Um, but nonetheless, what I was going to say is that IPFS uh, provides you your content, right? Uh, for the, for the NFT, both the metadata. Okay. And then the image, and then you have the, the actual contract that goes on to the blockchain. Now, the way that the contract is connected to the metadata and the image is via a IPS URI. Okay. Now the way to think about an IPS URI is that it is effectively an address where you can go and find where that metadata is being served via that protocol. Right? So if you go to look at a specific IPFS URI that's tied to, uh, that essentially you go to deploy a uh, a piece of JSON uh, to this URI, then whenever you go to access that URI endpoint, you're effectively going to see that metadata right in the form of a JSON. Okay, well that address right that URI, you actually to connect that address that metadata to that ERC seven twenty one contract. The way that you connect it is that you write the contract with the string that represents that given address, right? So you literally write the, the address of the URI of that metadata in to the contract in and of itself. And when you go to deploy, right? And I'm just talking about one single NFT right now, okay? Uh, when you go to deploy that specific NFT, you're going to deploy it and embedded within the within the solidity code, you're literally going to have a string that references the IPFS URI for the metadata. And that is essentially how the two are connected. Okay. Now, 
the other thing though, okay, so that takes care of the metadata. The other thing though, is that there's an image component to this. Okay. Now this is where I've seen it get kind of confusing on the internet and people will have a hard time distinguishing between the two URIs, right? Cause there's a URI for the metadata and then there's another URI for the image. And remember, these are just endpoints kind of like a, uh, like, um, like an HTTP endpoint. The only difference is, is on a different protocol, right? But the thing is, is that this, uh, the image URI is actually not, and I, I, you could, I think you could technically write, um, you could technically write the URI, write the address for the image that IPFS is serving inside of the contract. However, I see that, uh, that the OpenSea standard, right, for essentially being able to host your NFT on OpenSea, they kind of, uh, they they, how do I say this? They put some guidelines or some parameters around how, like be, best practices for essentially deploying an NFT. And effectively, what, what what ends up happening is that to make it compliant with the standards set by OpenSea, it, somebody who goes to mint an NFT. What they're going to want to do, or the developer who builds the uh, the, the NFT, what they're going to want to do is that they're going to want to set up the metadata for that NFT to have a reference to the image URI, right, to the JPEG, okay? So, effectively... When you put it all together, what that means is that the metadata has a, in and of itself, has a URI, okay? And that, the, the URI, that endpoint for that, uh, excuse me, that, yeah, that endpoint for that metadata is what gets deployed with the contract as a string, okay? And that, and that actual JSON object, right? The, the JSON object that gets served at that endpoint, that JSON object then has a reference to the image endpoint. Okay. So w when you think about it, this, the metadata is kind of tying it all together, right? Because the address of the metadata is in the actual ERC 721 contract. And then the address for the image is embedded within the object that's served from the, from, from that address that represents that metadata. Right. So, yeah. So effectively that, that's how it's working behind the scenes. And uh, there is, I've seen kind of a lot of different ways to go about this uh, from a general perspective. I figured why not take a look at what the standard marketplace is and see what is kind of the best way to architect this or, or give, give, give some imagery to this, uh, so that it's simple, a little bit more simple for guys to understand. And just so you know, this is the architecture that we're going to be utilizing to go and deploy our NFT. And then I, if I'm not mistaken, OpenSea has a test marketplace. And if we could get it set up like that, that'd be really cool. Uh, so you guys could see the full build out and, uh, yeah. So looking forward to that. Uh, ideally this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you are currently stuck in tutorial hell, I have a link down in the description box below. Send me your email and I will send you a set of videos that give you a free strategy for how to break out of a tutorial hell. Other than that, all my services are in the description box below. Make sure to leave a comment like, subscribe, and of course, share the video. I will see you guys on the next one.